I remember when I had my first dose of ayahuasca, I felt nothing. But the second time I had it, my whole life and my reality was bent. And I knew from that day forward, my life was never gonna be the same. I was a changed man who was almost like I had awakened from being a character in a video game and I'd realized, holy shit, humans are gods and we can create whatever the hell we wanna create. So since that point, I think that was four years back, I went on a journey where I wanted to merge the world of science and shamanism to understand the deep mystic every human has, but in a scientific way. So I started up my company and I remember I was sitting in the back of my house drawing these little logos of the styles that I wanted and I was creating all these different styles and some were actually hideous, man. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. It was like a retarded kid making this thing and I was like, whoa, man. I ended up coming up with something really nice and something that I was very happy with. I also remember the first time I, I was recording a little podcast in the back of my uh, house in a granny flat. Here you can see me over here, I'm bold as hell and I'm speaking onto the mic and I kind of look like I'm on meth because of my head jerks and stuff. So it was, it was a wild journey and I, I remember then when I moved into my other home, I, I had this setup going on all in the back of my house, just in my room. I had this little man cave, this studio where I was operating from, doing my podcasts and doing my little uh, video trailers and everything that I was learning and, and growing and evolving. And eventually I got a space in the heart of the city. I manifested a space in the heart of the city and the space is so big that I can ride my scooter, electric scooter around in it and it's beautiful. Check it out. It couldn't, I couldn't have dreamed for anything better. So thank you for everyone who supported me on, on getting to that point. Check it out. And I started producing content very heavily from my studio. I started creating prank skits. I started creating comedy shows. And matter of fact, these comedy shows were going insane because they were selling out. They were hitting some of the largest radio stations in Perth. It's conscious comedy. It's in Manning Park on the 21st of May. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a look. Uh, Mark from Rockingham says, apparently if you're Brad, it will come up positive. And we actually had to push people back saying that no, you guys can't come in here. This is this is too much, right? We had some of the most epic, epic uh, talents booked for the night. We had the host of um, myself, actually. And we had Tash Peterson debating a farmer, which was absolutely epic. We had an ex-lawyer comedian debating a LGBTQI pronoun advocate. We had a psychonaut, psychedelic advocate debating a priest. We had a golden buzzer award winner. We had some amazing comedy talent. They were just on the show. Never visited my place. How do you know? Because if you had, you'd know that you're talking a load of shit. I, I also did an outdoor comedy event, which was awesome because we had, it was like a gangster scene, oh, man. It feels like border security, you know? Like, you're just taking this man's bag. <laughs> do you have anything to declare to this sir? bag, sir? No. No? Alright. Got time zone cards. <laughs> <laughs> got Bali cigarettes. <laughs> He's definitely paid 100% duty on these, you know. <laughs> it's a good, hard-working Aussie citizen, right? Claritine? It was a comedy show slash car show, and we just had BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, Jaguars, all just parked over there. And, uh, you know, I couldn't thank anyone more than my sponsors who actually helped me go through this journey also. <laughs> Different comedians called Conscious Comedy. Um, it's basically advertised to me as comedy with a bit of intellect, something to make you, you think a little bit more, and something that has a 
a very clear message. And uh, things just got better and better. I was like, look, you know what? I need to step it up. I need to produce some music. I need to create some art. So I created my first song. And um, in my song, I, I, I do I call out the government a bit, but it's a very specific government of a very corrupt nation. And um, I have close ties with that nation. On a power trip, your power's being stripped. Sit back, witness when they come busting down your door. You better say, I ain't having it. No and then I thought I'd take it down a notch and get a bit more, you know, uh, lovey dovey and empowering and spiritual. So I created my second song. What was ever wrong with you? Now you don't gotta carry that bomb with you. Cause I know Mary Jane running through your vein, holding hush to your brain, covering all that pain in you. I got nothing but respect for the boys in blue. They give their life for you. And then next, I talk to some of the most interesting characters. I mean, interesting characters that I find interesting. Hi, Hamad. Happy 25th birthday on the 25th of March. Dr. Dennis McKenna, Roland McCrady from the HeartMath Foundation. Uh, I had local comedians on board who came down. Richard Sawada, all the way down from Melbourne. Hassan Nassar from Pakistan, he was a very controversial um, journalist who actually lived in a bomb-proof bunker and I had to go inside this bunker to actually go speak to him uh, and some, some really, really big names. So you know who you are who hooked all these things up. Thank you very much. I also trained to be a coach from the Tony Robbins Foundation and I learned some very, very powerful skills in my healing practice, which now I can help people with. So I created a Patreon on which I share all of the techniques, tips and tricks that have helped me to transcend the fear-based limitations that my mind has placed in front of me and really go Super Saiyan mode. So all this content's available for you guys too. Not only just that, I thought I'd push myself during this whole period. I was like, man, you know, what could I do? What could I do to raise awareness so that I can raise finances for Australia's suffering mental health epidemic? So I was like, why not box the premiere of Victoria, Daniel Andrews? So I flew all the way across Perth to Melbourne to actually meet with Daniel Andrews. And very interestingly enough, his secretary said, I have an appointment with him, which was booked. So I rock up to this door of his, of his office, right? With my full red velvet suit, looking smig, looking sharp. And she's like, no, you have no appointment. I'm like, what? So the next three days, I came back every single day trying to get an appointment with this man, calling left, right, and center. I think I made his secretary have a nervous breakdown. She called me, she was like, stop it. Just stop it! You can't just do this! And I was like, look man, I'm a businessman. I'm here to do business. Don't play around with me, boy. Anyways, that didn't go through yet, but I will get there. And I made sure, before I tell you the next amazing and really cool project that I'm working on, I'm gonna show you the fun that I also had along the journey and, and made sure to keep my load lightened.
So now the next project that I'm working on is a documentary series on manifestation. We're partnering with 15 leading authorities, scientists, teachers, visionaries, entrepreneurs, creators, influencers such as Dennis McKenna, Amit Gonswami, Charles Eisenstein, Valentina Onesor, myself, Neve Garland. There's so many other cool names on board. We have a few slots left. I'm not gonna tell you exactly who's just fully, fully on board because we're still getting some more people on board. So if you have any recommendations, drop a comment of who you think I should get on. And we've also created a technology that helps people level up their manifestation skills for only two minutes usage a day. So we're killing it over here. It's been tough, I'm not gonna lie. I know everything's just been great and happy dandy and this and that and I'm this influencer who's just living an amazing life. No, shit, I nearly went insane, bro, halfway down this track, okay? I nearly lost my shit multiple times, but I kept it in composure thanks to the family, friends, and loved ones I have around me and my dog and my cat Boots, who was jailed recently, actually. Um, I had to pay $400 bail money for this man to come out. But anyways, I love you guys. Thank you very much. This is the beginning of Disco Shaman. Again, we're jumping timelines, parallel realities. We're coming for you. Boom. Like and drop a message if you want to support us in any way. Check out my Patreon. Check out my Instagram. Do whatever the hell you want. Bye-bye.